Hi everyone, my name is Hayley Pittam and today with me I have the amazing Triple Delight. That is Erica, Linda and Jeannie. They are all the way in different states so I'm going to let them explain where they are from in America. And um, welcome ladies, it's lovely to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. It's going to be such an amazing um, in, introduction to, to, to you guys and you three being in the aquatic industry for, well, I've seen you since I've been going to IAFC and um, coming to your lectures at the, your workouts and your presentations and all the different stuff that you've done. And I've absolutely loved it. And you bring so much energy to the pool. So I wanted to let everyone else know about you as well, because there is so much out there. Oh, thank so, you. So um, Jeannie, where are you from? Uh, originally from Washington, DC <laughs> and live in Maryland now with my hubby and my cat. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, Linda, where are you based? I am, well, I'm actually in Maryland too. I think we're in, I'm in Prince George's County. We may be in different counties, but I think we're all in Maryland. So, oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and Erica? Yeah, so actually we all are in Prince George's County, Maryland. And I am actually retired and enjoying, as I continue to teach aquatic fitness and land classes uh, during the pandemic, but uh, certainly it's been, it's been great. We've, we've made lemonade, lemon aid out of lemons. <laughs> <laughs> yep, got that right. <laughs> yeah. So you just retired? Uh, two, three years ago. Three years ago. Is that from an like a normal job or is that right? I yeah. Retired from a nine to five, but I've I've been teaching group exercise all those years to, that I've been working a nine to five, and I've always said that when I retired, I wanted to teach in the daytime in the morning, and that's exactly what I do. I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so here here's the question: What was your other job? Oh, I, I worked for the federal government. Uh, I retired from the Department of Labor, 35 years. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And now when someone asks you what your job is, you can say that you're an aqua aerobics instructor. Uh, well, multi-talented group exercise instructor <laughs> because I do land and water and like different programming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> different programming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Linda, did you, ha did you have a, a side job as well? I did. I have been retired now for five years, five, six years, six years. And I was actually fitness director um, for a senior wellness center in Washington, D.C. Amazing. Amazing. So how long were you doing that job for? I did that for 13 years. 13 years. Wow. That for 13 years. Before that, I was actually teaching fitness um, part-time and running, um, I have a fitness business and yeah. running the, the my, my uh, fitness business at the time. That's amazing. That is so cool. And, and Jeannie, what was yours? What, what do you do on the side? Uh, a couple of different things. So I, I teach uh, aqua aerobics and fitness and had to pivot when the... Um, Mm -hmm. when COVID came and so we're doing online stuff with the YMCA now all three of us actually so we, we teach seniors so they're not able to get in the pool and group exercise right now so we're doing that um I was only doing pool for the longest time and and now it's like I had to pivot and do chair exercises and like we did with uh with IAFC virtually yeah. and um you know some cardio light and some strength and toning with weights and stuff and then my other job before this was I worked at a television station as a writer producer voiceover talent for about 22 years so I'm still doing voiceovers I'm still doing freelance I'm a freelancer now totally so I'm not That's retired amazing. yet. I don't know if I'll ever retire. <laughs> oh, no, I, I have been saying that. Like Linda's question that she added to the questions that, we, that we've put together are, you know, what are you going to, what, what would you like to be known for when you retire? But the thing is, being in this industry, we're not really ever going to retire because the water is just such a beneficial place for all of our bodies, no matter the age. It's magic. So, 
So, yeah, I'm so, we'll, so we'll be doing fitness until the end of time, you know, because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a healthy thing to do. It's, it's all part of our lifestyle. So, yeah. 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 And, and retiring for yourself, coming in back, you know, full time or, or at least more dedicated to the pool for yourself, Erica, is, is the clear example of how you don't retire. <laughs> in this <Right>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It doesn't matter the age you don't retire because between the three of us, there's a quite an age difference between the three of us and, and uh, we, we just don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you form Triple Delight? Who Linda, take that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. It's an easy answer. Right. Uh, well, we were at IFC, I want to say 2021 or 22. I mean, um, 2004, 2004, yeah. and we actually met each other at a facility in Maryland. Uh, Jeannie and Erica were friends, Erica and I were friends, and then the three of us became friends, and Jeannie was already um, certified with AEA, and um, Erica and I decided that we asked us to go to the conference with her, and we decided we were going to go, and it was in Sanibel. Yeah, and, so, <laughs> and you know, we we roomed together. We had never roomed together before. We were just kind of newly meeting each other, so we didn't know how this thing was going to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so um, they were doing pictures, and we did not plan this, and we just all happened to have on green, lime green, and black suits. They were all different brands, <laughs> and we took our picture on the tree. And it ended up being the cinephone in one of the um, AEA magazines. The I mean, Aqua I magazine. Yep. The Aqua yeah, magazine. Yeah, right. amazing. But, but when we were when we were taking that photo, like Linda said, when we were taking that photo and people were walking by, they were saying, what's the name of your group? What's the name of your group? But we were wow. just... <laughs> and so that's when Linda said... Triple, Triple Delight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! And the, re <laughs> and the rest is history. That's amazing. <laughs> the rest is history. We right. move. Yeah. We move together all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 easy to do with these ladies. We don't we don't bump heads bathroom. We don't bump heads with anything. It is seamless. So we we, we truly truly get along. We're like, and we have a lot of fun together. <laughs> we're TDA sisters. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> and, and with the fact that you were all wearing the same outfit, has that happened again since without planning it? Not without planning it. We usually do <laughs> <Yeah. wear anything else. laughs> Only there was only one instance. We, we didn't have the same outfit, outfit, but we all wore black. And we, we came out, couldn't believe that we, we wore black. <laughs> to wear and I remember it was one of um AEA's uh parties their um awards night their global night we yeah. came out and I still have those pictures but we all had black I couldn't we couldn't believe it and we <laughs> didn't we didn't talk to each other about it or anything but amazing that's awesome and so um with the the fact that you are in the same state but you're kind of away from each other mm -hmm. how often do you get to meet up well, before the pandemic, yeah, let's before, say, the, before pandemic, the pandemic, all the time, yeah. uh, we got, we got, you know, we get together for each other's birthdays. We don't live far from each other geographically in the state of Maryland. We're on the same side of town, oh. so it's easy. And we, when we have meetings, we would meet up in Airbread and bring our laptops and have meetings. We have lunch. Um, we get together just to hang out, girls, and we say we're not gonna we're not gonna talk business. Leave that aside, and we just hang out and have a good time. Go to movies and just do mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. do fun stuff to to stick together, you know, and and stay close to each other. So, oh, right. that's amazing. So you were whenever I've seen you, your your group work, your transitionings are so smooth, and you're able to relate each move how often in in that respects do you get to practice your routine so that you've got that slick movement <laughs> together 
Well, I think we know each other well enough to uh, to like feed off of each other, but we do get together for rehearsals and stuff. So like we did um, for AEA, the virtual uh, one that we just did in 2021, uh, we got together maybe about, I think it was ladies like two weeks before and practiced outside. <laughs> And right. we were supposed to be outside. Yes, yes. And, that, and then we had to pivot real quick because it <laughs> rained that day. So we had to come inside. <laughs> but we had gotten together um, for that and for other uh, all the other projects we do together. We usually get together maybe about a month before and maybe we'll practice maybe two or three, you know, two times a week or on the weekend. And we all t teach at different pools. So we'll ask our managers, can, can we come borrow the pool for a second or a lane? <laughs> and yes. just, you know, work out stuff. And, and we've usually written out our choreography if we know we're going to be presenting someplace so you know we'll 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 study it and go over it and make sure it works in the pool and one of us will be on deck and the other two will be in the pool and then and we switch it up so we know you know where we're going to transition and how we're going to transition and so it flows together nicely <laughs> that is that sounds amazing yeah and when it comes to our workshops that we do uh, the lecture part of it um, you know, one of us, we're, we're presenting and the other two are the class and we pretend they're a class. Yeah. <laughs> so we do it. And, and we ask each other questions just in case, you know, someone may ask that question. So we, we prepare ourselves that way as well. Oh, brilliant. Um, so in the, in the like delivering of your courses, are you delivering them all around the states? Are you traveling to locations or do you just help hold it in Maryland? Well, um, more times than many, we've been invited in two other states. We've been to Wisconsin, Georgia. We've been to Canada twice. Oh, nice. And, mm -hmm, and, and that, that was really great experience. We conduct workshops within the state of Maryland, but uh, we, we haven't lately, like, like Jeannie was saying, because of the pandemic. Yeah. But uh, we expect to pick up where we left off and... Hopefully, uh, others would like us to come out to their facility. <laughs> no place is too far. To. <laughs> we, we love to. Yes, is yes. the UK too far? Do you want to come here? No. <laughs> That's not too far. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too far. <laughs> hey, we're ready. Day. We, 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 are, we already have our TSA global numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I have my passport, so just recently. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have our um, conventions in October mm -hmm. and okay. um, we hope that after this year we can go back to being in person um, because obviously we have to see what happens over the next few months with COVID. Right. But yeah, um, right. I'll put your names down for, for 2022. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> start practicing now yes <laughs> we would love to. awesome so um with you guys having a collective long-term history in the industry what have you noticed has changed over the years let's mm. start with linda because obviously you've been from a management point as well um i think um we're seeing um more there are younger people now starting to teach. I oh, teach. get certified to teach water aerobics where before, you know, it was more of a 40 and up okay. instructor. Yeah. But now, you know, as, as I look at the workshops and, you know, I look at the attendees and the people that are interested because um, I also do a, um, it's an instructor course where we train well I train people to be instructors uh, for shallow and deep yeah. and I'm noticing that younger people are starting to ask me um how can they get certified to teach water yeah. aerobics which is a big change which is and I'm noticing that that happening from the management aspect um of it so That's and they're a little more open to more programming now than just straight water aerobics you know? yes and, and 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 also another change is that water aerobics is not beginning to be stereotypical of older people or seniors just taking it you know uh, and and not just women either 
we have a lot, a lot of men are coming, have a lot of different programming, especially, I mean, you know, you're bringing gyms to the water, the punching bags, the poles, yeah. you know, uh, the boards. So there's so much, you know, a lot of athletes are training in the water. So that, that's, that's a big change as, as well. Isn't it fantastic though? I think it's it is brilliant. Wonderful. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that we're getting men to see the benefits too, that it's not just for the women and that these, you know, this, this then covers the fact that yes, we've got athletes in the water all the way through to the age population. You know, this isn't just one age group. It's not just one gender. It's not just one specific. Yeah. And I'm happy the demographics are changing. It really, I mean, it was funny that when we were talking before, Erica said, it's not just the little ladies and, you know, the flowered swim caps. Because uh, I, when I was teaching at, I uh, taught a year at Howard University, and, which is a school in Washington, D.C., a college there, and an H HBCU, historically uh, black college. And I had a couple of kids, I was teaching water aerobics for them and also beginning swimming and uh, intermediate swimming. And I had one kid, I think, cause they thought they were gonna get easy grades. There was a kid there that was on the swim team actually that was from Trinidad and Tobago. And he thought it was going to be an easy class. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, just, and that was his comment. He was like, it's just, for, that's, that's what I heard. It's for little old ladies in swim caps. I was like, oh, I got you little old ladies in swim caps. And so <laughs> I kind of split the class between the swimmers and the non-swimmers. Yeah. And so I, I did some deep end programming for the swimmers because it was such a huge class. And then the people that didn't swim kept them in the shallow end. And at the, I think at the end of the session, he was like, oh my God, this is like the hardest class I've yeah. ever had. <laughs> Because he said that, I challenged him and he thought it was fun. It's like, so, you know, now it's like what's changing the most for me is the equipment in the water and yeah. uh, like the bikes and then, like Eric was saying, the bikes and the poles and, and the, the, the stand up, the mats that they've gotten in there now, like stand up paddle board and all that stuff I love doing. So it's like, I get to do what I love. So. <laughs> No, that's awesome. And the fact that, that, you know, that's music to my ears when you get someone like that who thinks that it's easy peasy and, and then they get in and they try it and they're like, actually, that was really hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't come to class saying that because it's going to be hard. For you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do love to give those ones just that little bit of extra challenge. Like, can you do that without your feet on the floor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that leads me really nicely into the next question of what is your favorite piece of equipment to use when you teach? Mm. <laughs> I can well, try mine. I have a, I have <laughs> a lot of different our flashcards. You have flashcards. Yeah, we Look use at that. With our speechless class. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's my, that's my that's my favorite piece. And people love that class when we yeah. use them. Are you are you holding them or are you putting on poolside? I put them on the pool side until it's time until I figure until I say, oh, okay, I'm going to use this move. And, and the reason we did it was because of uh, the other job that I have, voiceovers. Yeah. Um, I went in one day to teach and I had a voiceover job later that day and I had a scratchy throat and I was going, I, I can either, you know, try to talk over music and because I don't think I had a, a mic, a mic yet. I do now, which I highly recommend folks get yeah. when they're teaching. But because I had that and I'm just like, I can't lose my voice and, and they won't, <laughs> they'll kick me out, you know, going to a, a gig. So I had to do everything with no, you know, no talking and yeah. it was all cueing and hands and whistles. And, and we've got to thinking all together of, oh, this could be a, this could be a course. This could be an interesting way of doing stuff. So we laminated yeah. cards and with little moves and stuff and, and you can build on it. And so you build your own library of stuff. So you always have a different class. So, and people thought it was fun and they were laughing. So it, it just got people, you know, talking and together and laughing, which is an important part of everybody's day. So And I bet they paid more attention. Oh yeah, they you have to. <laughs> yes. It's actually it's actually um offered through AEA as a CC course. Yep. Oh speech. fantastic. Cause it was a hit at uh when we did it at AEA, yeah, when we did it a couple of years ago. Amazing. So the idea is that you are nonverbal throughout yeah. the whole of your teaching mm -hmm. that, and you're, and obviously you're holding the sign so they do know what, what's coming up, but you're not actually physically telling them what's coming up. 
great. That's amazing. Right. <laughs> That's so good. And yeah, obviously, so the, the, the simple idea of the fact that you couldn't talk because of your, your other job, but yeah. regularly, there are so many instructors who do lose their voices or they end up with nodules on their throats yes. or problems with their throats because they're not given a microphone on poolside. And I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit mean in that sense. Cause I'm like, I insist on it. Like if yeah. I'm going to, if I'm going to teach it, you need me, I want to be teaching aqua till I'm, you know, a hundred and I need this to work. Right. Till I'm a hundred. So I'm, I'm like, if you, if you want me to teach on your poolside, I need a mic. Yeah, and if they don't have one, then you you get your own. You provide your own because you do not want to mess up your voice or no. have to have surgery on on notes. <laughs> that would. No. I've had, I've known people that have had to get that, and it's like it doesn't always totally heal it, and they can come back. So it's like you don't want you don't want to have to deal with that in the first place. So it's maze uh, protect yourself on the front end as as opposed to the back side of it and having to get stuff done that you don't want done to your body yeah yeah i mean in the old days there wasn't these this equipment out there but there is now so we have no excuse we need, yeah. we need them right. definitely okay i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask erica what's your favorite piece of equipment to use actually i, I like the dumbbells or the spa bells that we use i like that drag when we're working with them and all the different positions that you can work with them, whether you're in shallow or whether you're in deep water. So I like that resistance that it gives and uh, there's just so much that you could do with them. That's my, my favorite piece of equipment. Dumbbells. Linda, what's yours? <laughs> uh, uh, I would, I have to choose one. Uh, <laughs> I would say the noodle. The noodle. Because, um, there's a lot we can do with the noodle too. Um, as far as been with it, you can use it as a piece of drag equipment. You can use it. Uh, you can use it so many ways. Um, I do something called a chariot race with it, where um, there are two students, one's in front and one's in the back, and the noodles around the waist of one who is actually the runner, and the other one is sitting on the noodle in a U shape, and that's the rider. And we run race across the pool with the other one just has their feet up in the air just riding. And when they get to the other end, they switch it and turn around. So now the rider becomes the runner and the runner becomes the rider. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of games you can play with. <laughs> yeah, I love, I, love, I love that one. I got one that's a bit similar and um, I do it at Christmas and it's, I call it the taxi. And <laughs> what they have to do is they have to go and collect people on their taxi. So they've got the noodle, they're the driver, and they have to go and collect as many people in their taxi as possible. So the, person, like <laughs> the person could end up with six people in their cab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like pretty cool. That. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the person at the front has to be very strong, though. <laughs> So, Linda, what's your other pieces of equipment that are your favorite? Um, that would be the cuffs, the ankle cuffs that you wear in the ankles. Yeah. Um, I really like those because they build that 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 um, that lower body, that lower body strength, especially the legs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a lot things. of stuff I love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could list them all. Go on, Jeannie. What's your other one that you like? The, the other one, uh, I'd have to say Aquapole. I love that. Because it's, it's so many varieties of things that you can do on it um, and, and different planes that you're working in and also add in the boxing bag. I absolutely love it. So it's like if you've had a had a day <laughs> <laughs> I can take out on it. and need to take something out on something. So that's fun to me, too. It's, people really seem to like that. So, yeah, so happy the pools are starting to buy them. I was going to say, do you have any are you teaching any pole classes? Do you have any areas that have got poles in your area? Yeah, actually, yes. I was teaching it um, in, what was the last time, Linda? I think it was October to November, and then the, everything shut back down again. And I had just I had started teaching um, the hydro board, too, at a different pool out in Maryland where we are, and they were doing, they were in demos. <laughs> I, I was supposed to do two. I got one in, and then everything was, like, shut down. down. So, But I love that, too, because I love paddle boarding, so. Yeah, yeah. They're, they um, are different for the ledge centers to have as well because it's so new to them and mm -hmm. it's not versatile as like a noodle is because a noodle can be used for all over. But yeah, yeah. Um, they in, in, in our pools in the UK, they tend to use the price of them as the excuse. Mm -hmm. 
it usually takes a while to get equipment into any place and then you have to to, to bug people nicely <laughs> to, <laughs> to try to get it into, uh, you know, into their budget. And so, some places really have, I mean, some people I've, I've been surprised that they've gotten, like I've gotten some bikes at a actual private club that I was teaching at. And that, that was a great class. It's, it's a fun yeah. class. I can't wait till it comes back, but it's like, you got to bug people nicely to get <laughs> the equipment you want or you bring your own, you bring your own right. stuff. Yeah. Linda, did you ever, with you being um, in charge a bit higher up than just a, just an instructor, did you get to get your facility to have more equipment in it at all? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, one of the facilities that Jeannie teaches at this, you know, we have, the three of us has a, a we have a friendship, a triple delight group, and then they subcontract for me on my. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. I, I have jobs. that with Linda. <laughs> I have that with my Linda too. My Linda gets me to cover her classes. <laughs> <laughs> it's um actually what I usually do is um if I want to pitch it to to a facility or to a recreation department I actually have talked to them meet with them send them videos of what it looks like and you know say that it's a new programming things are starting to change in the industry so if you want your um, facility to be right there on the top end of what's happening you need to look at this program bringing this programming in and so what they'll do is they'll buy a couple of pieces of equipment try it out we'll do a couple of demos and if they find that um there's really a, a good response to it then they'll gradually start to order equipment you know um you know, with Jeannie we had to try the bikes I think the bikes we did first and then mm -hmm. we used the pole next and then uh the board and then the the boxing bag so yeah. Yeah, it, it, it has to come in stages uh, when we introduce it to facilities. Yeah, I mean, that facility sounds like they've got, you know, if they've got the open-mindedness to start having bikes and they've got the open-mindedness to start having other bits and bobs as right. well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is great that you can all sub each other. How, <laughs> do, do, you, do you like um, limit it? Do you like say, I'll only cover five this month? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's like if somebody's in need and, you know, and, and sometimes because I'll be at a facility and there's another instructor that teaches right behind me. If she hasn't been able to um, make it in or whatever, or she's not feeling well, then I'll just stay. If I don't have another pool to go to, I'll, I'll stay and do it. Oh, my I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you make it up this class? So and so can't make it. <laughs> And a lot of times I'll, I, I've already been, I'll already be there at that facility. So I'm like, okay, I'll stay. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. yeah, it is, it is handy. I mean, it's, it's the thing as well that you know that you can trust each other to have mm -hmm. the standard that you want as well, to, to have that yes. connection that you want with your classes as well. There's nothing worse, that I think, than when you t come back to your class after being away on holiday and they just complain about the previous person that covered you. And, and because maybe they weren't up to the same standard, but that's only because maybe they're a newer instructor or they felt nervous or whatever. But, you know, when you've got the company of like you three helping each other out, you know that there won't be complaints. It would be, they'll all be like, come back for more. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, that's why Linda and, and we all do the trainings here is because we're trying to set a standard of yeah. folks so so that won't happen because that's that's not good for that instructor either that's not right. good for the you know their their self-esteem and if people are, have done that and sometimes folks some students will do it to their face which is not kind all the time but you know or we'll hear about it but so we were trying to get people up to a certain standard of of how to work and you know really that, that helps too so <laughs> Yeah. So the courses that you offer are the basic instructor course. Mm -hmm. And then you have some workshops as well. Or have you got what, what's your what's, what's all the things that you're offering? Well, we offer all the all the sessions that we had pre um, presented at AEA that becomes a part of our library and our workshop. So 
we have quite a list that uh, a vendor can choose from if that's what they would like for us to to teach. And then with uh, Linda's company, LG Total Fitness, like she said, she has a two day uh, instructor training that that uh, she would incorporate like maybe twice, two or three times a year, depending on the the need or that that that's how we build the uh, instructor clientele and we train them and teach them. And then they go on to, to be AA certified if that's something they would like to do because these courses prepare them to do it. So there, there are two shallow, there's a shallow instru instructor training and a deep water instructor training. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. You know, as, as Triple Delight, we also offer um, you know, just to give you a few uh, names of some of the workshops we do, we have a workshop called Off the Wall, and um, every it's in deep water and everything's off the wall. You know, we get these little catchy names. Um, <laughs> we, uh, the Olympic Challenge, uh, games we play, liquid nitrogen, get your deep on. We don't need um, no music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a workshop oh, where we didn't play any music at all. Right. Wow. And, 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 and the thing about it, see, Speechless and We Don't Need No Music actually stem from, like Jeannie said, there was a time where we might have been sick and we taught anyway, couldn't mm -hmm. find a sub, didn't want to call at the last minute, be a no-show. So we taught feeling badly, but we can teach without saying a word. And sometimes technology doesn't always work. The sound system is they out. Say that. And, yeah. <laughs> and so and we, we can teach with without any music. So we don't need no music. So that, uh, a, a lot of our uh, the titles of our presentations came from something that happened to us. You yeah. know, <laughs> uh, something life happened. And then we said, ah, that's the name of a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and it came to fruition. <laughs> wow. I mean, I find that idea of having no music, it's doable, but it makes the class feel about a hundred times longer. Yes. That, that's true. But, but see, the, but the thing about it, as an instructor, the show must go on. Yes. So, you know, you hear those beats in your head. And I, I agree with you a hundred percent. It seemed like the longest class ever, but it can be done. The point is it can be done. Yes, yes. And I can say that I think there is not one instructor out there that hasn't had that time where they've turned up and the sound system's gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so and, yeah. And you just have to get started. You can't keep messing with it. It's time right. to class. Yeah. So what, do, what does that workshop, is that a workshop where you're um, providing a workout on on not using music is is there a it's, it's on it's based on the the, um, the blocking it's based on blocking um, the 30, 32 count the eight count 16 32 64 the entire block so if you and if you keep that sequence of your block and your moves are in patterns to where you connect from one move to the next move from one move to the next move you go to the top to the bottom and so you you have a rhythm there but there's no music and what happens, um, I find that what happened when we did the workshop, they, um, you don't have the music to anticipate that, you know, when your music takes off, but because they knew we were at the bottom of that 64, they knew we were getting ready to take off oh, at the wow. top. And, and so they were ready. They were ready. That and so awesome. it, 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 was a, it was a good experience. And, you know, we taught the blocking, we taught the different phasing, um, of how you phrase your music, how to just get it in your head with your count and your phrasing. I can, actually, I taught Erica how to block music. I can block anything. <laughs> I can I can block anything, so. Is that a um, natural talent? Yeah. <laughs> no matter how slow, no matter how fast, yeah, we could block it. And then sometimes you have people create their own music because I think at AEA when we did that that um, workshop, we had folks. It really creates a community. We we started off with none at all and and hand signals, and then we had them start singing, <laughs> and we had them do parts. <laughs> so, right. And repeat. You know, so it made it really fun. 
Right. Be fine. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's and it was so really great. a mood lifter, and that's important too. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So did you did you want to did you have any more on your list that you also do because um you seem to have a list, Linda, that you had. Uh, of your let me see. We, you saw the um, Be Fit While You Sit, the games we play. Uh, that developed out of uh, just wanting to play games in the water and not just do water aerobics all the time, but actually get a workout with games. Um, we had we had deep pool school travel, right. and that was and and that was created just by going to the Maryland, the National Aquarium, <laughs> and you see schools of, schools of fish. You know yes. they're they're guarding going the same way. And so that's, that was created just by seeing that, you know, deep pool school travel. So that workout was designed where everybody is going in the same direction at the same time, everybody. And, and, and you're moving the class like a school of fish. Amazing. <laughs> and yes. then the balling class too. We had a ball, uh, one we called balling or- <laughs> A great fire. A great oh, balls great of ball fire. fire, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it came out of kind of like a uh, kind of volleyball and also um just I, I love the where you put the ball in between the legs and you're using your adductors and you know it's it's telling people and to, just to make people laugh too of of what happens in the pool and what happens underwater stays underwater <laughs> <laughs> mm. and just, you know some of this stuff came from I guess with kickboards and with the balls and stuff, it, it's, it's stuff my sister and I used to do, my younger sister and I used to do after swim practice because <laughs> we swam from when I was about six till about high school. Amazing. And, what was your stroke? Uh, backstroke. Oh, okay. It was a 50, 50, back, 50 yard backstroke or a 100 yard backstroke. <laughs> so wow. That, that, just some of the stuff we used to do after practice, just the two of us, and then with other people, we would play. And yeah. like when we did the games we play, some of that stuff came out of like sitting on the kickboards and just stuff we used to do when I was a little kid. And, and just bringing that forward years later it has been a lot of fun. So well, we're still big kids. In oh, time, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Got to agree with you there. <laughs> These are such awesome names, and they're and they're so inspirational. And the fact that you pulled them from other, some very interesting resources and different experiences. What's um What's one of your favorite ones then? You know what? I have to uh, include one that's called Rock Bottom, mm -hmm. and, and and that was designed from that was a shallow. Uh, programming designed from the waist down because okay. everybody wants to take care of their quads, hips, and glutes. So that it was a total body workout from the core down, rock bottom, you know, but it was, but it was positive, but that was the catchy yeah. phrase. Nice. I like that. <laughs> it was power. It was a lot of power moves in that particular uh, presentation. It's a bit like um, legs, bums, and tums idea where you on land where people are very much focused on their legs, bums, and tums, but you're doing it in the water. So yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's a lot of plyometrics, you know. Like I said, a lot of in out, a lot of leg movement, suspension, and shallow. You know, yeah. It was it's pretty cool. Fantastic, fantastic. Have you ever thought about um, putting some of this stuff on virtual so you can train without, have, you know, with all the COVID situation? Have you got any of the courses and workshops virtual? Mm, the only one that is, I think, is Speechless. That's the only one that the AEA had us do. And, and we shot it here in one of the pools that we, we t all teach at and came up with the questions and stuff. But the other, other ones we have not done yet that yet. Oh, well, I've just given you the idea there. Because <laughs> we do have an underwater photographer that's interested in working with us. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever do one-to-one -one training or do you just do groups? Mm, Linda has. She's done one-on-ones. Yeah, I, I do ones. Um, I um, do, uh, uh, I trained quite a few years ago for um, aqua therapy and aqua rehab. So I do one-on-ones with that and um, actually aqua per uh, personal training with obese clients. Mm -hmm. One with those two. 
yeah. What's your favorite? Do you prefer to be in a group or do you prefer to do the one-on-one? -on -one? I prefer group. Same here. I prefer, I prefer group too. Yeah. <laughs> you have the most impact on, on the most people and getting people, you know, in a group to be able to, to work out together and to have community because sometimes that's the only time that they may have a community or be able to hang out with friends and a lot of people are home alone and we don't know what folks are going through so for them to come out in a big group and I mean they've I've got folks that are do coffee together afterwards and stuff so I like the community aspect of it yeah yeah do yours all also go out for cake and tea after your classes Mm, some of the students do. <laughs> I'll go out for like protein after class yeah. if I'm starved if I've taught three in a row, yeah. <laughs> but, and on, on the flip side of that though, although I do prefer uh, group training or, you know, teaching uh, in a group setting, every once in a while, if it's, it's before a holiday, you, you know, a major holiday and you're, you're still going to have class. You may have only one person show up. So, <laughs> and, and sometimes they say, am I the only person? Oh, yes, that's okay. You don't have to teach. But, you know, I still try to keep it positive and let them know that they're just as important. But I'll, I'll tell them, I said, look, today is a day. It's one-on-one. It's, -on -one. it's personal training. Look at it that way. It's something you want to target. It's something you you know you want to learn. Do so you have any questions for me? And I'll, I'll go ahead and teach for that for that one person. Make them feel special. Like Jeannie said, you never know what kind of day they had. You never know what's going on with them behind the scenes or after class. So if they came, they showed up. I, I don't want to turn them away. Um, and I've, I've, I mean, if they really don't want to do it, okay. But I always let them know I'm here for you. So, you know, look at it as one-on-one -on -one training. You got me all to yourself. They kind of like get get that special attention means that they um, mm -hmm. they can definitely then harness li little things that maybe they weren't going to ask you beforehand. Right. They weren't really yeah right. yeah I can mm -hmm. get that yeah. Um, with the the kind of clientele that you have coming into your pool, do you have do you have a mixed bunch of people? Do you have people that have injuries and illnesses, or uh, and maybe a bit more therapy based? Or are they all just there ready and focused to get fitter and healthier? Well, for me, I it's totally a mix. And I think that's where your skill as an instructor comes in because you want to keep everybody. And so there's different levels and it's good to, you know, demonstrate those different levels, level one, level two, level three, or modification. And, you know, you make that announcement. You, you don't know if someone may be rehabbing something. You don't know, if they, but you know. So you try to keep everybody covered in that one class. And when you do it and everybody keeps coming back or they sign up for the next session, session after session, then uh, then that's success. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I've had visually and hearing impaired in my classes. And like Erica says, you, you really have to hone the skill. And so what I actually did for, and I had them both in the same class. Yeah. Uh, and so what I had them do is, the class was twice a week. So I had the um, hearing impaired person come earlier one day so that visually we can work on cues so yeah. that she'll know where I'm going in the class. And then my visually impaired person, I had them do the same thing. And I actually got in the water with her and had her sit on my leg and actually showed her what a ski felt like, what the kick felt like, what a jack felt like with her arms and legs. Wow. So hear it, but she can see it. So now she can feel it. And I mean, I had both of them continually come back to my classes with without assistance. That's amazing. Because it empowered them, you know, their, their um, aid or the person that was with them was always up on them. And I was like, let them go. Just give them that a moment to feel empowered, mm -hmm. uh, and do something on their own without someone's assistance all the time. And they actually came back to my class until I actually stopped teaching to run the back end of the business for about five or six years. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely, truly amazing. And, love- and the participants, the participants help because they're understanding. And so they, they, they embrace them as being right. part of the class that nobody's complaining about, oh, they might have bumped them, you know, because they might not have heard well or not seen well. So that, that helps too. So it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. So what in your time teaching at Gravix has been one of your biggest challenges to overcome? Hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, getting more African Americans into the pool. Oh, because women, especially because of the hair issues and the caps, and they don't keep the hair dry, and and just um, and then the other thing is the people that don't swim, African Americans that don't swim, and they think that a lot of a lot of folks think that if you don't that that you're going to be taking them underwater, I guess. Oh, okay. Which we don't do. No. <laughs> But I think they have preconceptions of, of what the class is going to be like. And so they, they, they scare themselves out of even coming to the pool to try it out. And so you have to educate people that way. So that's, that, that can be a little is that the most common? Time. Yeah, is that the most common thing that it's about keeping their hair dry? Or is it about going under? The, are, they, are they nervous about going under? Where, how do they... <laughs> It depends. I mean, there, you get some folks that swim that don't want to get wet. <laughs> I mean, they don't want to get their hair wet because they've just gotten it done. Oh, <laughs> we have a lot of we meet lots of people like that that yeah, have and just a lot been of to the hairdressers and can't get their hair done. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, and a lot of caps don't help that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. Gosh, I'd be a rich person if I could come up with a technology that would keep your hair totally dry. But um, and then you've got the other folks that just don't swim and they're, they're just afraid to get into the pool. Cause I had a couple of people like that when I was te- when I was teaching actual swim lessons on the college level and the beginners, I guess, depending on the school, the school that they were in, um, one of them was mandatory that you had to take swim lessons. And a lot of people left that to the end of their senior year and what have you, but there, you've got some folks that do not want to put their toe in the pool because they've had such crazy experiences with family of, of how you, they think you teach people how to swim <laughs> so and they don't want to get near the pool and so you've got to kind of get that fear out of folks heads and sometimes you have to take them one-on-one to just to get them into the pool and get them acclimated to the water and the depth and all that stuff and just their body feeling different in the water as opposed to land and and just some folks don't want to do that but if they want to come to the pool, then sometimes you've got to take the time to get them in there one-on-one to get them to come to a class, you know, to get them comfortable with themselves yeah. and then come to a class to experience it with a group of people. So do you think it's generational? Do you think there's an element of where the older generations are telling the younger generations of their experiences or what they've seen or what they've heard? Definitely, because there was a time when African Americans weren't allowed in pools in this area and Oh. Would you know? So a lot of people didn't learn how to swim, and it was too dangerous to go. Like if you live by a river or by a body of water, folks didn't do that because you know no lifeguards, no nothing. But it's like if you're not a- allowed to go into a specific facility, which really did happen ago. You know, like fifties, sixties. You know, yeah, it was it was either segregated or it was you weren't allowed in. And then people lived in the city; they didn't live near the beach or anything, so they didn't get in the water. And if you don't know how to swim, then that makes it even worse. You just don't go and you've got family telling you, no, 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 it's, it's dangerous. Or you, I don't want you to do such and such. Or So then you just have, you know, a lot of group of people don't want to get in the water, don't want to get near it. Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing front to kind of try and overcome, to try. That is such a big challenge. That yeah. That is going to be a long process bit by bit especially if we've got you know previous generations going through that which is Mm -hmm. awful and then they would then not encourage the young ones to go swimming because that's not their mindset their mindset is to do that and and then as time you know as time moves on uh some challenges may be that there's just pools are not available or as close in proximity to where some people live and then you have to depend on the parents you know to sign children up for those swim lessons so they can learn how to swim but um i think in our area i i, I can only speak for our, our area 
because of what I see going on. I mean, in the state of Maryland, more facilities are being constructed that have pools, or if a new facility is being constructed, then the pool component was like their phase two or phase three, yeah. and it will happen. So we have more pools, like school, you know, like elementary schools close closer together. So children are able to learn how to swim. In the UK, we have a um, law, it's, it's a, a guideline that's been given by the government that the aim is that every child must leave secondary school being able to swim two lengths. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that kicked in, uh, I can't remember when it kicked in, but that we have a swimmer called Duncan Goodhue and he basically went to the government and said more people need to learn how to swim mm -hmm. and um it's, it's i'd say over 15 years ago but he implemented this law that came in to say that everyone has to be able to swim by the time they leave primary school and that's important it mm -hmm. really really is because we've yeah. had some stories come up on the news in this area that have just, I mean, have been horrendous of, of just a whole family, like kind of taken out, it happened in Louisiana. This was a couple of years ago. I think there was a family that was having a cookout by the river and either one or two people went in to, to try to, you know, to, to, to swim, to cool off. Yeah. And they started drowning, like four other or five other people tried to go in after them and everybody passed away because nobody knew how to swim and there's current and, they got taken away by the current and nobody could, you know, nobody could help, nobody could save them. So I think wow. that's really important. That's, that's a, I mean, it's an excellent skill to have and I think it should be mandatory, so. Oh, I agree. Yeah, wow, the whole family, wow. Oh, I can't imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, 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 it's imperative that people learn and it's like, just the way what I was saying before, just the way some folks teach you, family, older family members to teach people how to swim, and is by tossing folks in, and that yeah. totally. I mean, I had some a couple of girls in my class that were just like she. She didn't even want to sit down and put her foot in the water because oh. somebody had tossed her in the pool, thinking that's how she's going to learn, and she almost drowned. And she said when she was thirteen, but then it had a great ending. She came back, I ran into her actually at Linda's mom's 80th birthday party and she came up and I knew her face and she was like, Coach Johnson. She's like, I went away to, with some friends at graduation and and she said she got in, she went to Africa, I think, and she got in the ocean and was able to swim with her friends. She said when she got home that summer after class that she taught two of her cousins how to swim. <gasps> Amazing. And nobody in her family knew how to swim. I mean, it was, that was awesome to hear that. Yeah. that made that big of an impact on something yeah so that made me happy <laughs> that's amazing yeah that is. yeah because there's there's so much about that whole you know breaking the cycle breaking yes. that that regular you know repetitive repetition of the family not going swimming or mm -hmm. that that story coming through um but then you know we don't have to be confident and able swimmers to do aqua aerobics because they're right. standing up and their feet are on the floor so we do have some people that are a little bit on the weaker side but mm -hmm. yeah they they can still um to do aqua aerobics with having a less of ability yeah, yeah. just need to be a bit comfortable linda, linda have you had any challenges over the years uh no just um the same ones Je Jeannie mentioned uh just, you know, getting more people um, acclimated to the pool. I mean, we, we get people that sign up for a deep water class that don't know how to swim. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get that as well. Uh, it's, it's 10 feet. Uh, yeah, it's deep water. But my foot's not going to touch the bottom. It's deep water. So, you know, um, getting people, you know, used to, uh, both shallow and deep and not to be afraid of the water, you know, and that's the biggest challenge, you know, having people not afraid of water. Even when they sign up for shallow water, they're holding on to the size of the pool. And I'm like, it's okay, your feet are on the bottom. You're not going to drown, you know. So that's, that's 
you know, the only other challenge that, that I see other than that, it's fairly okay. Yeah. Good. Brilliant. What, um, what piece of advice would you give a new instructor coming into the industry? Definitely mentor with somebody who's been doing it for a while that knows how to do it safely and that's dedicated to it, that it's not something that, you know, that they've been forced into doing because they've, they've got some folks that they want to automatically certify people that work at the pool that really don't want to do it. Um, so we I would back here and, too. Yeah. And a lot of people don't, that's, that's, they don't want something else added onto their job. Um, if that's what they wanted to do, then they would have gotten certified on their own. But it's like, I would have recommend that they work with somebody who's excited about it, who's dedicated to it, who's safe about, you know, teaching water aerobics and that has fun doing it. And they would learn a lot. Yeah. And I would, I would add to that, um, to just relax, have fun when you're teaching, you, you know, uh, don't take yourself too seriously because you want to come across to the class that you have a passion for teaching and that you have their best interests at heart. Um, like Jeannie said, you know, pair, pair themselves with someone who they, they can mentor under and, and really learn from. And I would encourage them to take, go to conferences because yeah. you can always yeah. learn more and or go to other instructors classes to get new ideas, fresh ideas. You don't want to keep teaching the same way, the same thing all the time. I, I, and I would share this story with them. It's not even a long story, but I remember, I don't know if Jeannie and Linda re even remember this, but I remember it was, we were going to, we were going to attend, you know, present at a, a conference. And I, I remember, you know, we, we've all been teaching for a long time. So, you know, quite a few years in. And I remember saying, you know, what else can I do with a noodle? Oh, my goodness. What <laughs> else can you do with a noodle? I've done this. I've done that. A, B, C, D, and E. I've been to your class. I've been to your class. Blah, blah, blah. What can you do with a noodle? And, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I went that in that particular year, just maybe a couple of weeks before we went, I took a workshop. The whole class was with the noodle. I was jaw dropped. <laughs> I was jaw dropped. Couldn't wait to get back to use different moves, different techniques. And everything wasn't necessarily holding the noodle. You know, you get off it, do some things, you know, do it. But, and, and, and as I, I remember going home, I say to myself, that's why I go. Yeah. That's, that's why I go, you know. There's always so something I, to learn, always. That's right, always something to learn, always. And you're never disappointed. Right. Never disappointed, so yeah. that's what I, I completely, would. I completely agree with you on that, completely, 100%. You can go to one and come out with just your mind going, <gasps> Why didn't I think of that? I should have been doing that. <laughs> I'm going to add that into my next class. I love that. Right. Idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and, you know, your, your class always knows when you've come back from a conference. <laughs> oh, she's back. <laughs> and then sometimes they'll tell you, we're not letting you go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Linda, right. we lost you there. What did you just say? <laughs> I said, um, they don't like us very well when we come from the conference. Like, if they know we're getting ready to go out. They're like, oh, my God. You got to come back with all this new stuff. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's when you turn up. It's when you turn up as well with your with your workout plan, ready to practice on them as well. And they're like, when when is this convention coming up? How many? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, it's been absolutely lovely to meet you three ladies and Thank to have you, this friends. aquatic chat. <laughs> and um, and obviously we can find you on um, the website that you've got. So, Linda, what's your website for your courses? Um, it's You can go to um, lgtotalfitness.com and everything for TDA, Triple Delight, that we offer is going to be there. And um, of course, our email, 
which is um, 3daquatics at gmail.com. Well, it's been absolutely amazing, like I've just said, and it is so nice to finally meet you because, like I say, I've attended your um, lect your lectures and workshops and all the different things that you've done at AEA, um, IAFC's convention, um, and so it's absolutely lovely to meet you, and I can't wait to actually see you in person at the next I one. I know, I know. Are you going? Are you <laughs> Thank going you for having us. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And 